So, hey, I think a lot of people getting pretty darn worried about uh, what is actually uh, going on in the Middle East. Um, after this, of course, after the extraordinary, um, and people are saying it, unprecedented uh, drone and missile attack direct from Iran on Israel. This is the first time of a direct assault uh, by them. Normally, they use their proxies, whether it's Hezbollah or Hamas or the Houthis or any other organization. Um, but this is the first time we've actually seen that direct attack. It was far greater in scale than anyone had, uh, I think, expected as a result of that never claimed by the Israelis, but we all know it was the Israelis uh, attack uh, in Damascus on a building that was next to the consulate, the Iranian consulate, an attack on the, the Iran Revolutionary Guard uh, sort of headquarters there, um, which killed, took out some very key figures in, in the uh, Iranian military. Now, um, in terms of where we go now, there's no doubt at all that the, the Western allies of Israel, they, they stood up when it came to this drone attack. They actually came side by side. We saw US, the UK, France, and Jordan, interesting, I think it's very significant, uh, standing uh, by Israel, shooting down uh, those drones and missiles. Um, only one, one child, tragically, um, uh, seriously injured. Incredible success for the Iron Dome and for the defense Western allied pact. However, we know, we know that Israel is going to want to retaliate. We've got the, uh, the UN Secretary General, uh, Antonio Guterres, and every other world leader urging caution, urging everybody to just calm down and not retaliate. The question we are asking today is, as Israel has vowed revenge after the missile and drone attack by Iran, is, and world leaders urging restraint, is, what is your reaction? Should Israel retaliate? Do they have a right to retaliate? Should they not retaliate? Should they, as Joe Biden apparently told Benjamin Netanyahu, take the win of all that Western allied support? I want to hear your views. Give us a call, 0344 499 1000, text on 8722, or get in touch on X at Talk TV. Calls are charged at the national rate. Text cost one, standard network rate message. Um, Sam, you don't have to text in or call in. You are here. What is your reaction to this? I just find this entire talk of revenge or retaliation bizarre. What occurred was an act of war. Iran, to all intents and purposes, declared war on Israel with that missile attack. This wasn't launched by proxies. There was no fake. There was no facade. There's no hiding behind anything. It sent several hundred missiles and drones directly at Israel, another sovereign country, with the intent of killing their civilians while they slept. Now, if that isn't war, I don't know what is. And in war, when your enemy strikes you, you strike them. That is the nature of warfare. We have put this bizarre notion, once again, this unreasonable standard on Israel, to say that, hang on, yes, when every other country around the world is attacked in an act of war, they get to go back to war and they get to go and yeah. chase after who does it. But you, Israel, the only Alone. democracy on earth, are not permitted to do so. I mean, I think back to 9-11 attack, you know, on, on, uh, on the US, and not just the US, the UK, pretty much the whole of the, I think it was the United Nations backed a huge array of countries allied in the attack on Afghanistan. I mean, took out a whole country, pretty much, including huge numbers of civilians in retaliation for the Taliban harboring al-Qaeda and bin Laden. Um, and yet the expectation is to be different. Now, the thing is, because of the Iron Dome, because of this technology, military expertise, you know, from largely the US helping with funding that and, and the expertise as well, we do not see the level of casualties on the Israeli side that we see, you know, in any, in any other act of warfare like this. I mean, you know, when we see what happens when Russians launch this many drones and missiles on, uh, on Ukraine, people die. Um, and yet, because of that, somehow, Israel isn't seen as the victim. I've, I've seen an awful lot of reports over the weekend saying, well, you know, this was retaliation for, for Israel's attack on that consulate. Uh, but again, but the people they attacked, again, not civilians, not the attack, wasn't specifically on the consulate, it was on the annex building next to it. OK, it's probably a nuance, but nevertheless, containing people who've plotted the murder of Israeli citizens. Everybody knows, it's stated openly, that Iran uses proxies to fight its war. Iran has been waging war on Israel for forever. I mean, under the mullahs, isn't it? Okay, using, the, you know, using the Houthi rebels, using Hezbollah, who are raining rockets on northern Israel day after day, hour after hour. And the only reason we're not seeing Israeli uh, civilian uh, deaths is because people have been evacuated from that area. Um, and again, of course, with Hamas. Um, 
so it does seem to me, when people say, well, Hamas are allowed to attack Israel because of things that Israel have done before to Palest Palestinians, um, Iranians are allowed to attack Israel because of that attack on the consulate. There never seems to be understanding, but Israel is allowed, therefore, to attack because of all those proxy attacks on them. As you say, it's a different standard that we don't hold our own governments to. I'm telling you, if Iran or any other country had said 301 missiles and drone attacks on this country, I'm telling you, I wouldn't want that country standing the next day. I want that country obliterated the next day because that is how, that is how you, weirdly, you maintain world order, the willingness and the ability to retaliate the knowledge that you will from those who would wish you harm, and Iran wishes us harm, the, you know, we're, we're allied with the great Satan of the United States and the little Satan, Israel, um, is that you will be hurting a lot more than us. And that's, do you think Israel has to retaliate on that basis? I, I do, and the most disgraceful reaction of all came from Joe Biden, who's telling them to take the win. Getting attacked is now a win. Let's deal with some things here, first yep. of all. Firstly, General Soleimani, who was a leader of the Quds Force, this same group that was in Damascus, was killed in a US drone strike a couple of years ago. The US did not turn around and say, oh, that's right, because we killed your guy. Iran, you can send 300 drones yeah. at us. And right? then we'll take the win. And we'll take the win, right? And if you go up to a US soldier and you shoot a US soldier in the chest and he's wearing body armor and his body armor protects him, that is not a win, right? You do not get not punished because you have failed to murder him. Yeah. You get punished for attempted murder, okay? That is the standard of uh, that every human civilization has ever uh, imposed on anyone, which is, if you attempt to come after me, that is just as bad as yeah. if you are successful in doing so. Yeah, again... You don't get another free hit. Now, it, look, Iran has said, look, you know, that's the end of the matter as far as we're concerned. I paraphrase, that's pretty much what they've said. Um, Israel saying they will vow revenge. Their war cabinet has met. There's you know, five people in that particular cabinet. They haven't. They met three hours yesterday. Did not agree what the retaliation should be. I completely accept their right to retaliate. And I think it's appropriate for them to retaliate. Is it appropriate, though, for them to retaliate on a small scale so that they have had the final word, but the diplomatic niceties, everyone can agree that everyone's had their tit for tat and then, and then things can calm down? Because... Up until this point, up until that, that drone and missile attack, I think the general view was, from all the experts we've spoken to, certainly, is that um, Iran did not want the Hamas-Gaza conflict to expand uh, on, you know, on, to the wider Middle East. And we know, you know, the Saudi state, the Jordanian state, no one else in the Middle East wants this to happen. So there'll be a lot of pressure. But so would a, would a sort of a, a measured response, would that be acceptable, do you think, to the Western allies who are wringing their hands right now? Do you know what? Screw the Western allies. The Israeli government have a duty to one group of people in particular, the Israeli people, and their first duty is to keep them safe. And Iran has all over its country hundreds of facilities capable of manufacturing weapons of the sorts that were sent directly at Israel over the weekend. If I was the Israeli government, I would set the only mission of my armed forces, in, insofar as it relates to Iran, would be to permanently destroy each and every facility involved in the manufacture, distribution, firing, targeting of That's, those attacks. I, I think they'd be totally justified in that. However, if that does end up leading to a wider escalation, and we know whatever an awful lot of the, the, the Arab state leaders might think, often felt very differently by many of the people in their countries who were far more sort of militant against uh, Israel, that actually, you know, that will end up being worse. Is there an argument that Biden take the win thing? We have seen Western allies, I think, frankly, being very lily-livered when it comes to supporting Israel's right of self-defence and their actions. Although, in Gaza, again, I want more civilian aid to go in, um, and, and I think that, you know, whether, whether, whether anything close to Hamas's claims of a uh, loss of uh, innocent civilians in, in Gaza is, is, is true, it's too many. Um, however, however, um, the fact that the West had stood by Israel in their hour of need over the weekend Finally, showing a bit of backbone, if we should have been showing a lot sooner. I think if, Israel, if, if Iran had felt that we had, yeah, Israel had Western backing so much, I think we wouldn't have seen that level of drone attack. Is there an argument where 
getting that coalition of the willing and the West to support them, that, that, is, that is a more important win for Israel at this time in terms of dipl diplomacy and in terms of long-term tactics. What is the virtue of this proportionate response? What is the virtue of not escalating here? People have been not escalating with Iran for two decades. And what has Iran has one, yeah. done? It has spread terrorism in Yemen. It has spread it in Syria. It has tried to attack Israel. It has attacked Saudi Arabia. It has killed uh, US personnel in Iraq. It has been allowed to fester as a terroristic sore upon the Middle East. And let's not, let's not forget here, the people, the countries that hate Iran the most are other countries in, in the, the Middle East. East. Yeah. And it has been always assumed that, oh, we mustn't push them too far. We don't want to escalate it too far. And the result has been that the situation has grown graver yeah. and graver and graver. Our to the point the yeah. that Iran is now standing literally on the precipice of developing the bomb, the nuclear yeah. bomb, which would make it permanently un undealable with. There was nothing yeah. that can be done. We have been pandering to these band of mullahs for too long at the expense of uh, lives and at the expense of good sense. And if Israel is the only country in the world that has the good sense and the bravery the need and the backbone yeah. to stand up to Iran, so be it and good on them. It's an interesting point. I have to say, I find it fascinating those on the left who go sort of anti Israel on every principle and therefore cheering on Iran. You're cheering on a country that beats young women to death for not wearing a piece of cloth over their head correctly.